many ways. You know, the Bible says we stumble in many things. We stumble in many things. It's not okay that we stumble, but the fact is we are, we're weak. The fact is we're weak. We stumble. God's grace supports us. God's grace lifts us up. God's goodness uh, carries us. And uh, Jesus' blood was given because we're such failures, honestly. And uh, hallelujah for His blood. He said in verse 11, let me get back to the text here. Believe me when I say, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. So we're back here again. Remember uh, Nicodemus said, said it um, because you know no, no one could do these things you're doing unless God was with you. So Nicodemus saw it. He saw the evidence, the proof in the miracles. And, and here again, Jesus says, okay, if you can't just believe me, then believe what's been happening. That these are, it's evidence and proof that he's the son of God. And so there it is again. So if you're still struggling, even this morning, I challenge you to trust the one who raised the dead, raised Lazarus from the dead. And if you're still struggling today, with that, with faith and, and your doubt and you're still struggling in your mind, then I trust you to believe the one that forgave the woman at the well who had five men, you know, and the one she was living with was not her husband. Trust the one who forgave her there, uh, the woman at the well. If, if you're still struggling today, then, I, then I, I challenge you to believe the one who is the good shepherd who gave his life for the sheep. Trust him. He'll care for you too. I challenge you, He will. This is the kind of God we have. And that His miracles prove His nature. When you see Jesus, you see what God is like. Don't look around you. Don't look at people. Somebody say, you know, I'm not going back to that church because the people are so bad. You ever heard that? It's an excuse. and I mean, it's, you know, there's some truth to it, Right? Sometimes we do some pretty bad things in, in the name of the Lord. I didn't get any amens. <laughs> no amens there, Jim. <laughs> but it's the truth. We have, to, we have to own up to it. So, you know, in the case of King David, you know, there's a great contrast between King David and King Saul because of his repentance and all of that stuff. David did not get off the hook just because he was forgiven. You know, throughout his life, he suffered the consequences of his sin. He suffered it. And just look at the story about his family and how disoriented it was and all the struggles and all of that that took place in his life. Yet, God's grace covered him. Even that child that was born, God's grace covered him. He, he prayed and fasted, hoping the child would live. But the child didn't. But God spoke to him. You know? The child's not coming to you, but you will go to that child one day. Hope. We have all kinds of struggles, all kinds of sins, all kinds of imperfections. Invite your friends to come over and look at us closely. They'll see all kinds of problems here at UCC. Because we've got people here. And because of that, we'll have all kinds of imperfections. We'll say things we shouldn't say. We'll do things we shouldn't do. That's, we're on display. Display. Everybody's looking. If you're a believer and you don't think the way you live matters, you're wrong. Because how you live does matter. Everybody's looking. Everybody's looking. In the case of King David, his enemies had reason to blaspheme God because of his actions. To speak against God. If that's how their God is, you know. Look. Look at how their king acts. So this was not like hidden from everybody. It was out there. Here's how their king acts. And you know, there's that truth too. Everybody's looking. You say you believe and follow Jesus. They're looking. 
They're looking for a reason. And Satan wants to put in their mind and heart a reason not to follow Jesus. And don't you be their reason. Don't be it. Don't let that happen. Okay? Don't let that happen. Don't you be their reason. You, you talk about Jesus. Yeah, you talk about Him. You acknowledge Him. You live for Him. You follow Him. You walk in the way. Live in the way. Look at verse 12. I tell you the truth, anyone who has faith in me will do what I've been doing. That's a powerful sentence there. And of course we know, see, when Jesus went back to heaven, He sent His Holy Spirit upon His apostles. And basically, they did in the world what He was doing. They were eventually scattered out all over the world, and they were doing those exactly what Jesus was doing while He was on earth. And uh, throughout Christian history, this kind of ministry has been going on for these last 2,000 years. All throughout the earth, the ministry of the Lord Jesus has been going on. Faith reveals, or faith is revealed, if a person has true faith, it will be revealed in how you live. It will be. Others will see it. He says, believe in me. No, he said, I'm sorry. Uh, 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 uh. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do. Will do. Anyone who has faith in me will do. So we have to understand that there is a life lived. Those that have faith in Christ, their life will be different. It's a different way of living. They will do. Faith also asks from God. It asks from God. You know, the Christian life is all about praying. All about praying. Uh, Jesus Himself said, ask and it be given. So the, the Christian life is about talking to God. From the very beginning, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The one that calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Just because a person says a little prayer doesn't necessarily mean they're saved. However, those who are saved are the people who pray. They talk to God. They talk to Him in their heart and their mind continually. This is the work of God's Spirit. Jesus said, ask it would be given. Here He took it to a, a, high, a greater level if you look at verse 8. Um, I'm sorry. In, uh, I've got to find my, work, my verse here. Verse 14. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. That is a powerful sentence. Anything in my name. Now, now as we follow the Lord Jesus, we learn what His will is, right? We learn that. Not everybody understands that. But following the Lord Jesus, we learn His will. We can start to discern His will. He said, whatever, if you ask me for anything in my name, I will do. It's not that prosperity stuff there, Jim. Okay, It's not that. It's not what we're talking about. I don't think he's talking about, you know, yeah. Yeah, I don't believe that's this. Yeah, that's a little stretching. Stretching the truth here. They're professionals. The false teachers are professionals at stretching the truth. Twist it, turn it, make it into something it's not. This is not talking about getting rich quick. Amen? You said that. Amen. It's not talking about getting rich quick. It's talking about asking. If we follow the Scriptures related to God to prayer, then we know, one, it's got to be asking the will of God. Okay, we know that. Even Jesus Himself surrendered to the will of His Father. Completely and totally surrendered. Will we, if, if we're asking for anything, we know it has to be asked in faith. We're really believing. Really believing God is the solution here. Whatever is a, the problem, God is the solution. That, that's prayer at its best. And uh, asking and praying. Trusting. God's will. Believing. Faith. Ask. When we have real faith, it drives us to our knees. When we have real faith, it causes us to plead with God. When we have real faith, we look to Him for the solutions. Not just, not just trying to work things out or hoping everything will be okay. No, we're looking to God for solutions. Because we believe He's a living God and He is the solution.
to our life's problems. Amen? He is the true and living God. Faith asks. Faith worships. Now, in uh, verse 13, he said, Whatever you ask in my name, uh, I will do, so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. This is really dynamic. When you think about the... the uh, I was going to say consequences. It's not the right word. But the ramifications of this statement. He said he will do what you ask in his name. He's talking, of course, to his disciples. He'll do it indirectly to us. He'll do what we ask in his name. And that the Son may bring glory to the Father. So there's worship going on here. Worship. Our lives are an act of worship. An act of worship. The very... Very living in the way of Jesus is an act of worship itself that the Son might give glory to the Father. We can't even know the Father without knowing the Son. We can't get anywhere near Him without the, the, the atonement of the blood of Jesus. We can't get near Him. And he's, He made it possible that real worship could take place. I beg you, brothers. That's how Paul said, I beg you, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Some translations say, it's your spiritual act of worship. Your spiritual act of worship. Faith worships. It reveals who we are. Faith, our faith reveals who we are. And it asks, and ultimately it worships. Living in the way Praise the Lord. No other way to heaven. Religion's not going to get it. Good works will not. Sincerity cannot save. Miracles in of themselves cannot get us into heaven. No matter how good they are. No other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Listen. Hear the word. Look to Jesus and believe in God's way. Heaven is the destination of those that receive salvation. If you're here today and you know the Lord Jesus as your Savior, your departure day is at hand. The apostles talked about his, his departure. He said he de desired to depart and to be with Christ, which is better, he said. He desired to depart and to be with Christ in Philippians 1.23. That's what he was longing for, his departure, because he understood that in Christ, this heavenly place, this heavenly destination is much greater than here. He understood that. He knew that. The way. He desired for the departure. But he knew that for the meantime he needed to hang around. And friends, for whatever reason, the Lord's left us here. You're here today. I'm here today. You know I have friends that have already left. Already gone? There's 14 out of my high school graduating class have already left. 14, yep. Yeah. Some of them were terrible tragedies. And some of them happened as early as ninth grade. And the others all in between. Different reasons, sometimes cancer, sometimes accidents. Uh, different, different reasons. 14 out of that group are already gone. For some reason, I'm still here. Think about your life. Sometimes they're falling like flies around us. But for some reason, you're still here. God has kept you and preserved you for your life today. Your departure is coming. For now, it's better for you to be here. But your departure is coming. Are you ready for that? 
you know, in a, in a sense, the, it's the uncertainty we wonder about. What, what is going to happen to us? You know, how are we going to die? And that kind of thing. And none of us know that answer. None of us know that. And we don't have the authority to take it in our own hand. Like suicide. We, that's not given to us. That's not, that's not something given to us. God does not give us that right <laughs> to take our own life. Only, only God can give life and take life. And uh, the, when, when we think about, think about destination and how are you today? None of us knows what's going to happen. But the message of the gospel says, Jesus says, believe me, there is a place. Jesus says, you mean you don't know who I am? We talk about him over and over and over and over again. Are, are you going to just walk away? Maybe you're here and, and you've been putting it off and putting off uh, coming to the Lord in faith and you've been resisting and rejecting and putting it off and putting it off. Maybe you've been doing that. No longer. Don't let it be too late for you. Because once it's too late, the time is up. The time is up. There's nothing you can do once you're gone. As worse as things might be on this life, in this life for you, it's nothing compared to an eternity without God. You can't compare it. The good news of the gospel is you can be ready for your departure date. You can be ready. Come to Jesus Christ by simple faith and trust. Like a child trusts and believes. Come to Jesus Christ. He will forgive your sin. He will come into your life. He will equip and prepare you for heaven. And in the meantime, He's got something for you to do. Right? Amen. Let's pray together.